Hi, my name is Christy Carrolls. Today we'll be going over a dynamic endpoint threat defense demonstration utilizing the McAfee ENS endpoint security suite. And we'll be talking about the difference between signature-based detection versus our advanced containment and machine learning capability. In this demonstration, we're going to show how we're able to try and evade signature-based detection by obfuscating malware, but how it's caught by our advanced containment and machine learning capability. Hope this gives you some good information and you enjoy the video. Next, we're going to look at some of the differences between the ENS uh, standard signature-based protections versus our machine learning, real protect, and dynamic application containment protections. So I've downloaded some files, our test files, and first we're going to start showing how if we have signatures for something that we are uh, able to scan it and then detect it. But what if we don't have the signature for something? So let's go ahead and select all these files I have in test samples and scan them for threats. You're going to notice it's going to start scanning and it's deleting these files as it goes. It's only going to take a couple seconds. It's going up through the detections and you'll notice that it has uh, detected 26 detections but it's scanned 30 files. So here's our scan is complete. Uh, we are able to take a look into the ENS console now. Let's go ahead and close this. Look at our event log and here's our threat prevention. So it was an on-demand scan and it basically indicated that we knew that it was deleted, we found it, and it matches uh, a malware piece, right? This one knows a Trojan. So we're able to fi find it via um, signature-based protections. Now there's three samples left. So remember, we scanned some files um, and it didn't detect others. So let's go ahead and launch this one. I'm going to run this file. So it's a little bit different. So this is an on-click or an on-execute. And you'll notice that a security alert pops up. So let's go ahead and check it. And we're going to open up our, whoops, our ENS refresh our screen and you notice it was it's a different type of capability so adaptive threat protection uh, found this file and it cleaned it because it was able to clean it but it was malware detected it, real protect was the one so it's our machine learning functionality was what determined it was and remember we didn't have a signature for this so it gives you some good information as to the differences between um, having a signature and being protected or if we didn't have this real protect capability and someone launched this executable, they could have been exploited and had this vulnerability run on their system. So some good examples of the difference of why we don't. Uh, we don't want just signature based and we want those advanced protections. Next, we're going to show how uh, we may have signatures for something, um, but we can try and morph it. That's a lot of what um, malicious actors do is they morph the file or they obfuscate it so that it can't be detected by signature base. And then we're going to show how we can find it with our other capabilities. So I have some other files that I've selected and that I've downloaded. And I'm just going to scan these top two and I'm going to right click and scan for threats like I did before. This again is just going against our signature protections. And you'll notice that um, scan is complete and this file was caught. You'll notice it starts with 68 Bravo for Charlie. So keep that in the back of your mind. So we're going to close this and I'm going to extract those files. I'm going to get that file back. So let's go back to my downloads and extract them all. Place the ones that are already in there and then there's our file back again 688 Bravo for Charlie. So now what we're going to do is we are going to use Joe Crypter. Uh, it's one of our obfuscati obfuscation tools and we are going to morph this file. So let's go ahead and load the executable. 688 uh, Bravo for Charlie. We'll open it up. We're going to convert it. We're going to select all of our checkboxes. We're going to do all sorts of stuff to it. Add some random characters. I'll put my name in there. And then here's some of our evasion techniques. We're going to use Joe's special to evade AV. And then what we're going to do after this is we are then going to morph the executable. All right, so looks like uh, things have worked in the background. All right, we're all done. Okay, let's close our file. It used the command prompt to create some files. And we know we've got some new things here. And so if we go back and we look at our original file, 680 Bravo for Charlie, uh, we have a back, which is our original file. That's just a backup file. We're not going to touch that for now, but we have this new application um, and we are going to right click it and we are going to scan it for threats. 
item scanned, nothing found, right? So it definitely evaded our AV at this point. Um, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to run this file. So let's double click and run it. And it looks like it's definitely running. Let's go ahead and check our endpoint security window and look at our event log. If we notice what the time is, it's 11.06, and at 11.06, dynamic application containment uh, caught it, it blocked it, and it contained it. So that's the interesting part about it, is it said, hey, it was definitely going to try and do some nasty stuff, but I've blocked it and I've contained it from doing any changes or making anything um, different or uh, violating what the system really should be doing. So the nice thing is, is remember we scanned it for threats, we had no signature base on it. When we double click and we executed it, we we're then able to provide blocking based on dynamic application containment, which is our sandboxing tool. Now notice, remember, I created this file too, so let's double click on this file. And we just tried to run it, but now that folder is empty. So let's go over here, it looks like we have new events. And look, adaptive threat protection on execute scan ATP ran this file um, in a container, meaning contained the file and didn't let it do anything because it had an unknown reputation and it had a specific containment threshold set on it. So based on policy, we saw that there were security alerts. Oh, and look at this. We have more files, more alerts coming up. So Real Protect Cloud. So Real Protect Cloud actually sent information about this file to our Real Protect Cloud capability analyzed it and sent the information back and we cleaned the file and notice now the file is deleted. So sometimes it takes a couple extra seconds. We contained it while it was being analyzed by the cloud and now we have protections against a file that had been obfuscated uh, right in front of your eyes. So again, there was no signature base for it, but used our protection. So hopefully this gives you good, good information as to why our advanced protections are needed.